So, we're going to look at drone registration, the Demares, the Drone and Model Aircraft Flying Registration Scheme. Um, we're coming around to our first year of renewals. The system costs 2.2-ish million. The renewals are going well so far. A lot of people seem to be stuck in loops. Um, luckily mine's not yet. I've not come across it yet because I didn't rush to register. I had a bit of leeway, um, so I just used it. Um, but yeah, 2.2 million kind of niggles. Soap testing went well then for whoever built the system, so congratulations, you know, well done on that. Whoever signed that off, we give you points there. Um, yeah, 2.2 million. So, drone registration. You pay your nine pounds to become an operator. What does that actually mean? Well, a drone operator means that you, as the operator of this drone, for example, or your drone, means that you are responsible for it, basically. Which means if you have someone come along, a friend who comes along and wants to fly your drone, you cannot technically let them fly it without them taking the flyer ID test. Okay? And the flyer ID test is the 20 question, it's free, it lasts for three years. Um, and it's it's just it's free, just go and do it. And that's to make sure that you, the operator, understand that your legal requirements and the flyer ID is for them to understand their legal requirements to fly said drone. So, now, really important, operator ID. Um, this year, it's not changing. So if you had one last year and this year, it's probably not going to change. Now, it is going to change allegedly next year. There's a chance it could change. So, labelling our drones, how do we do it? What, 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 what's a nice, easy way to do it? You could go on eBay and you could buy a drone label or an operator ID. And what happens is you give them your ID, they come back and get a nice pretty little label and you stick it on your drone. And you can pay for the privilege. However, there is another way. He says, grabbing his bits. So, the other way is, you print off your operator ID on a piece of A4 paper like this. Okay, so you just print it off. Um, there's no telling that I've already done some test ones already. Um, you take a pair of scissors. It really is this simple. Look at this. All done. By the way, I had to do a health and safety course to use scissors. Da -da -da. Look at that, cutting out a label. Look. <gasps> this is really, really hard, guys. Be careful, you know. It's really, really tricky. This is so tricky and it's very dangerous, okay? Scissors. Be very safety conscious, always hold the pointy side down, close together. There we go. We'll put the scissors out of the way so they're safe. There's our safety, there's our scissors out of the way. I need them back now. So, problem is, it's not very sticky, is it? It won't stick to the drone. How do we fix that? We need our scissors back from the safety place. We need some tape. This is fibre tape. I did look for cellar tape. I can't find any in the house, I don't know what I've done with it. So we're just going to cut a strip. Oh, he says. Thankfully, fire tape is kind of see through. It certainly won't stop you reading what you've printed off. Remember that you have to have a 3mm font there at least, okay? So we lay down our label face up, we put our tape over them. We lay our tape over the top of it, like so. And you can still read the operator ID, okay? It can go anywhere on top of the drone. It can go on the side. It can even go into a battery compartment in here, if you want to. You can put it anywhere you want, okay? But it must be somewhere on the drone that requires no special tool to access it. So I can't really put this in the battery compartment because I'm a tool and I have to take the battery out. So I'm just, I can't do that. Um, now, so you just stick it on the drone, okay? It doesn't matter where, you can stick it on top like that, operator ID, done. Don't show your operator ID to anyone, it's no one's business unless it's the police. Everyone else can do one, 
okay? Don't put a copy of it on Facebook because there are people out there, there are people out there that will, you're going to find this amazing, would take, get your copy of your operator ID, stick it on their own drones and just fly up how they want. You think I'm joking when people go, oh, he's taking the mickey. Remember, car licenses have been copied for a long time and these things do happen. So just keep your operator ID to yourself is my advice. No photos on Facebook with everything on it. Just take it off or blow it out. Okay. Now, also, when you sell your drone, you take your operator ID off. Remember, and there's a lot of questions on this. How do I register my drones? You do not. You are only registering yourself as an operator. You have one operator ID. This goes on all your aircraft that you are operating. Okay, that's it. So, for example, we need another one now. So that's a multi-rotor anyway. Oh, now get a fixed one. Right, now we've got a fixed wing, so aircraft. Where would you put your operator ID on a fixed wing? Well, you could put it in multiple places again. So it could go in the top here, into the battery compartment, under the battery will be fine, anywhere in the body. Remember, only if you need a special tool, okay, to access it, do you need to have it externally or somewhere that doesn't require a special tool. I'm a tool, so therefore I can't put it in there, okay? Well, I will put it on a fixed wing for me, is I'm just gonna stick it in the wing area here. Okay, I'll just stick it in the wing bit there. So when it's closed, the operator ID is done, won't put the other wing on. And again, the only person you ever show it to is the police should be asked to see it, and that's it. You could carry it in your wallet as well, have it as a, as a piece of paper printed off. And that's operator ID. When you sell your aircraft, you take your operator ID off, and that's it, that's all you've got to do, okay? And that's the simple way for doing operator IDs. I've got some big model aircraft, I can't get them out because it's too big. Problem is they have battery compartments where you put the battery in, you screw it up and it's secure. The Problem is with things like that, you have to have the operator ID on the outside. So lovely model aircraft has to have the operator ID ruining its, uh, its scheme. So we thank whoever came up for the operator ID idea. We thank you very much. But there we go. Okay. So. That's fixed wings. Should we now talk about remote ID? A remote ID. Right, let's talk about remote ID. So remote ID basically is for security and privacy reasons, is what we are told. It's, if it was about privacy, anyone with a telephoto camera lens, because they can get a kilometer, kilometer half, you would think they would have to register and they can breach security with those kind of cameras a lot better than what we can with a drone camera. Drone camera doesn't even come close to a telephoto lens. So I think the reasons behind it must be somewhere else because the privacy doesn't make sense at all, okay? Um, it just doesn't, you know. I, I, don't, I don't get anyone that can cite privacy as a reason to have drone remote ID. It's not logical in my eyes, okay? There is a security, then is their second thing that we've got to have remote ID for security. I would also challenge that as just nonsense for the most part. We have our operator ID on our drones, we are registered, so why we need remote ID is beyond me. Um, because remote ID, what it does, as you're flying along, okay, it's just transmitting. Now, important, it doesn't transmit back to the CAA, okay. However, it is stated that remote ID must transmit so someone that can use a mobile phone, an iPad, that sees the drone, can look up, can see it, find it in their on their Wi-Fi kind of transmission thing, click on it, and it goes, ah oh, yes, this operator, so it'll, you'll get like a web page or something, and it'll come up and it'll go, operator registration number, operator ID, okay? It will then tell you the geographical position and height above the surface or takeoff point. Okay, so probably from the takeoff point. Um, it will then show the true course and ground speed. So it will say it's flying sort of uh, heading 260 and it's flying at 30 miles per hour, for example. 
And then finally, and the bit that I don't like, and it makes no sense, is the geographical position of the remote pilot or the takeoff point if it's not available. I think, I think they're trying to make sure that people that do prison runs are known where they are. However, if you do a prison run with a drone, you're not going to use one with remote ID, are you? You're going to have bought legacy stuff, something off Banggood, something off eBay. It won't have remote ID, so the security reasons out the window as well. Plus, what about the security of and safety of the remote pilot if you're giving away their locations? Okay, so a lot of the times you can end up under an NDA. Okay, so we end up flying under NDAs for different reasons. And we don't want people to know where we are because if just someone, general public, can find out where you are, or someone that's doing nefarious activities can find out what you're doing, and you could be working for someone that needs to know something, you could end up in worse trouble yourself. So I don't like showing off where the position is. I'm under NDA for quite a lot of flying. I don't need my remote ID pinging out. It's absolutely pointless. Okay, so remote ID never transmits, very important, never transmits back to the CA. When you turn your aircraft off, you turn off the device, that flight is gone. Okay, so that flight record's not stored. Any remote ID system that does store your flight records, my advice is don't buy that one. What you want is, as soon as you turn off your drone, it's done. Okay, be very careful when it comes to these devices, my advice. Okay, um, and that's remote ID. Okay. Electronic conspicuacy, I'll cover another time, but remote